to Zoom. All right, how are we going? Uh, yes. Yes. So Excellent. Everybody's coming Hi, in. Everybody. Hi, everybody. <laughs> uh, excited about this one tonight. Uh, tonight, we've got a very special guest. I guess I must say that all of our Australian <laughs> cheese makers are very special guests, but uh, this one in particular. Now, these guys are pretty much the pioneers of mm. Farmgate cheese in Australia, a very important part of the landscape. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome David Johnson from Tarrago Cheese, Tarrago Hi, River. How are you, David? Good, good, Sam. Good, Alan. Yeah, glad to be here. Uh, yeah, this uh, is going to be fantastic. Really looking forward to uh, diving into particularly a lot of the history of Tarrago because um, it certainly goes back quite a number of years now. So, um, now for everybody who's watching on Zoom, uh, there, if you want to ask any questions of David, there's a and a section, but also the chat function as well. Mm -hmm. So you can use that. Uh, and also, if you're on Facebook, uh, we can, if you want to ask questions on Facebook, by all means, do it there as well. Um, before we start, uh, it'd be great to know where everybody's tuning in from today, uh, what you're eating, what you're drinking, and where are you? <laughs> all right, now, what do you... What are you eating and drinking, David? Uh, I've just had a, uh, a helping of Shadows of Blue and Triple Cream. And uh, I've been hanging off, but once, I, um, once I'm done here, I'll be opening a Cibarella, which is a King Valley um, uh, winery. I'll be, uh, where my wife's from actually, I'll be opening their Pinot Noir. So oh. until then, it's um, a little bit of near and south rainwater. Oh, yum. Beautiful. Yum, 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 yum. yum. That sounds great. What if we, we have a Peter Lehman Stonewall uh, Shiraz? A, nice. 2000, yep. a nice 2005 Shiraz. It's, it's beautiful. Um, Pick that up in, at an auction, actually. It was pretty great. Mm. So now, David, let's go way back. Um, way back, way back, way back. Uh, how long have you been involved in farming and cheese and everything like that? Yeah, well, um, I guess my parents and the Jensen family got involved back in 1982. And my mum and dad actually went overseas in, I think, 1980 and 1978 and led some uh, tours to some farming areas in America and saw some guys actually selling goat milk off the side of the road. And they got back here and it was back when the last dairy burn, uh, downturn was. And they thought they could get a lot more money for their milk by making their own cheese. So Laurie Jensen, partner in the business, um, actually grew up on the farm over the back hill from us. And mum and dad got together with Laurie and his dad, Alwyn, and his mum, um, Hilda, and started making cheese on the farm back in 1982. So uh, first sort of blue cheese commercially made in Australia. Wow. And yeah, um, when I look back at now, they were they were mad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they were. They yeah. certainly were. Now, um, yeah. interesting point you raised there about uh, the downturn in the dairy industry. I think Australia went from about sixty thousand dairy farmers down to only about six thousand in the space of what only about forty years or so. It was a, a mass uh, mass change. You know, it's not like we're uh, producing less milk, we're producing a lot more milk, but um, with only yep. 6,000 farms, it's it's amazing. Yeah, the, the, the dairy industry, and, and I look around our way, and when I was a kid, they were all dairy farmers around here, and between our farm here, which is about two and a half kilometres north of Nearham South, and Nearham, and the township of Nearham South, used to be five dairy farms, and now there's, now there's us. So, uh, you of course, you used to make a living out of milking about 50 or 60 cows, and now we're up to about 250 cows, and uh, that sort of minimum sort of amount of cows you need to make a living out of it these days. So it's it's get bigger or get out sort of stuff, but um, yeah, or, or get innovative and value add to your products. Uh, yeah, exactly. So. Tell me, you know, before we go into sort of, I guess, a, a lot of the history of, of you and um, Tarrago River, um, yep. how important is it to have 
sort of that farm gate, the, I guess the cheese component to the dairy? Yeah, we, we think it's really important having control over the milk. It's, um, it varies, like today is 15 degrees and raining, so those cows are, are going to produce different milk than they did yesterday, which was 21 degrees and sunny. Um, so, but, but what it does do is if we look after our cows really well and fully feed them and treat them really nicely, we think we can produce stress-free milk. Um, that milk does vary a little bit as it comes in over the season and that sort of thing, but it gives us a chance of producing excellent quality cheese every time, uh, every time we make it, rather than having to buy in the milk and, and getting whatever you get from the company that uh, delivers it out there. So we think the farmhouse stuff is, is really important. Um, and it also gives us control over how well those cows are looked after and, uh, and, and how we treat them. And David, we've been to your farm a couple of years back and it's such a yep. beautiful place. And those cows, they look pretty happy. <laughs> They're pretty lucky yeah. cows, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, look, look, we always say, yeah, happy cows, happy farmer. And if you look after them, they look after, after you. Um, yeah, we're, we're in a great part of the world where we are in West Gippsland. We're, we're not drought proof, but we're not far off it. Um, and this year especially has been a been a cracking season with uh, good rains over summer, which is highly unusual. Uh, but even when it's dry here in Gippsland, it's it's not as though it's dry for six months of the year. We might get two or, two or three months of dryness over the summer. Um, we always got can grow summer crops to keep those cows fully fed. Uh, and yeah, we think it gives us a, a, a real advantage over a lot of other specialty cheese makers around. Yeah, definitely. The um, you're talking about sort of how you know you really look after the cows. When the cows are stressed, does it change the milk in any way? Yeah, they, they see it in the um, they see it in the vat straight away. Especially if it gets really hot, it's usually the first cold spell of the season. The cows don't like too much, and then they they respond to it pretty quickly. And it's the same with the first hot spell of the the year. But so being in um, in West Gippsland, uh, we don't get the heat that uh, say Northern Victoria or other areas get around the, the country as well. So it's a perfect climate down here for, for keeping cows as stress-free as we possibly can. Yeah. So now let's, let's, uh, talk, let's talk about some of the history of Tarrago because it, it's pretty much peppered all the way through with some key milestones. And I guess firstly is the creation of the first blue. Yeah, which was which was Gippsland Blue, uh, and I, I look back fondly on those years because I was only a, a, a kid back then. But um, Laurie Jensen, my partner in the business, and and Richard Thomas, who's sort of an icon of the industry, they they used to come down on weekends and make cheese. Uh, so they'd work in Melbourne during the week, and we would keep a little bit of milk aside on the from the dairy. And uh, they come up and make Gippsland Blue on the uh, on on the weekends, and then Laurie's dad Elwin, he'd be the one that probably had to do all the hard work and look after uh -huh. the work, and um, do all the salaring and make sure it was looked after, and uh, and then and then uh, yeah, uh, sell that cheese in sort of twelve or fourteen weeks' time. So yeah. Yeah, we've certainly had uh, quite a few people the last couple of days knowing that you were going to be on tonight's Meet the Maker, saying how they have fond memories of the early 80s um, and their first taste of a blue cheese was Gippsland Blue. And it's, yeah. it must be a pretty good feeling to know that, you know, so the first time someone tries something is your thing. Yeah, I, I, look, I think everyone had had a bad experience with blue cheese back in those days. It was uh, <laughs> probably shipped out of Denmark or Europe, and um, it was it was yeah, pretty out there back then. But when we started making Gippsland blue, Laurie always wanted to make a creamy, uh, uh, it was full, complex flavoured blue, and you'd get people to taste it, and they think, "Well, oh, that's not as uh, that's much better than what I expected it to be out there." So. And look, I certainly have fond memories back of those days as well, where where we used to live in a house on the farm, and you'd um, you'd have a sign up at the front where you'd toot your horn as you come past the house, and uh, myself and my sister would run out there and uh, fight to get our ten percent commission by serving us some cheese out of the out of the fridge at the uh, at the factory. So uh, we 
created quite a following back then of um, people that would, would call past and uh, come and get their little bit of Gippsland blue. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, and we've done a, quite a few events um, with some of your cheeses too, David, and yep. we have converted a lot of non-blue lovers, haven't sure we? Have. Like, particularly your shadows of blue, I think is a real yep. gateway to blue cheese. And yep. um, yeah, we've, we've turned a lot of people towards blue cheese from well, your cheeses. We always say shadows is the uh, blue cheese for brie eaters. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's so true. If you, can get, if you can get it down their throats before they realise that they're actually uh, eating blue cheese, you will get about a 90% conversion rate on it. So, um, yeah, and look, I describe shadows of blue as the cheese that you sit down and uh, you start eating it before you know it, it's all gone. Uh, yeah. It certainly and, is. And look, it's, it's our most popular cheese. Um, and the Gippsland blue has always been our iconic cheese. and I think it's got a much uh, more depth of flavour and uh, it's natural rinded so it, and it takes longer to mature so it uh, it gets a depth of flavour that probably the shadows uh, doesn't get and I say with Gippsland Blue you, you taste it and then uh, 30 seconds later you're still tasting it and that's what we uh, that's what we're going for with the uh, especially the Gippsland Blue. Yeah I'm going to share um, the Gippsland Blue here's photos of the Gippsland yep. Blue look at that yeah. thing yeah. So explain to me. Uh, so the, your uh, shadows of blue has what a sort of a wax coating on it compared to this one, which yep. has that natural rind. Um, can yep. you sort of walk us through the natural rind and how that yep. forms, and what are sort of some of the flavours of the rind compared to um, the, the nice meaty parts there? Yeah. The the um, I, I guess the rind on the Gippsland blue. Uh, is really there to protect the cheese from the uh, from the inside, and we do a lot of work with the, the Gippsland Blue by rubbing it, um, actually putting moisture into the cheese, and, and and really what you're trying to do is control the moisture loss out of that cheese. Uh, with Shadows of Blue, we put wax on the outside of it, uh, which is really a non-traditional way of preserving cheese, but uh, it it does stop that moisture loss uh, as well. Um, and it's just two different methods of, of, uh, of preserving that, uh, uh, that nice creamy uh, paste in the middle of the, uh, in the, of the cheese. Uh, it's creamy, look at that. That, that looks, amazing. yeah, it's oh. uh, pretty happy with the one that's coming through. Uh, and, and that's what we say, we, all you're trying to do is control that moisture loss out of the cheese. So uh, the longer you can um, uh, stop the moisture coming out of the cheese, the creamier that, uh, that, that curd's going to get. Uh, wow, look at it. it looks like it's melting, doesn't it? That's amazing. Yeah, yeah that's, that's getting it's getting ready to eat. That's um, I had some of that last night, and uh, yeah, it's uh, I'm pretty happy with it. So uh, this cheese that, that we're seeing now, um, yeah. at this obviously looks like it's just prime and ready to eat right now. Just super yep. creamy. Yep. It looks like it's it's pretty uh, pretty well matured. Would you take that any further or? I think in about three or four weeks, it's going to be still better. It's it's still the mould's still growing in it. It's still uh, got some got some life in it. Um, it's starting to get gooey, which is what we really like to produce here. is is really gooey cheese, uh, and the gooier it is, the the more ready to eat it is. So, uh, what we're trying to do is make it hard for everybody to handle that cheese, but the uh, <laughs> consumer's going to love it. Yeah, um, it looks fantastic. Yeah, so look, it's it's got about a month's life left in this one, and it's um, it's it's going to be awesome cheese. Excellent. So now you yeah. you spoke about how you uh, specialise in uh, sort of your soft and really gooey cheeses. You know, you've got your your famous triple cream, which is uh, yeah. when when they're flying on airlines all over the world. Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> now, now you you do. No, and it's it must be a bloody hard thing to do a white mold cheese like mm. your your triple creams, but also blue cheese in the same factory because I certainly know that a blue mold can just go through everything. How do you keep the blue mold out of your uh, white molds? Exactly right. So so we have two what we call ends of the factory. Our, our where we started, where we make our blue mold cheeses. And then we have what we call the white end, which is where we make the white mould cheeses. And the, the guys that when they make the white mould cheese, they'll actually uh, shower in, put on fresh uniform, 
and and they'll be isolated in that uh, part of the factory, uh, and they can't interact with the, um, uh, the the blue end. And certainly, the guys that work in the blue end can't go then go up to the to the white part of the factory. So, so we've almost got two factories in in one. Yeah, wow. and that's that's the way it's evolved over time. So yeah, we're we're quite used to isolating. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the different parts of the the, of the factory. Uh, yeah, it's, I guess that's the beauty of the Australian industry. In um, in France or Italy, you'd you'd have especially you'd have a producer that would only produce blue blue mold cheese and and not white mold cheese. And I guess when Laurie developed all this, he said, "Well, why not?" So we did did uh, uh, say, "Well, yep, we can produce white and uh, blue mold in the in the same factory." Um, mm, sorry, I was just about to say something and then it just absolutely <laughs> flew straight out. Um, now, I had an email earlier today from a lady called Shirley Bacon and she was talking about how in the early 80s, uh, you know, Gippsland Blue was one of her favourites. And uh, one of her questions, you know, she used to buy it at some markets in Victoria, some just local markets. Uh, but, you know, those markets have gone. Um, her, her, and it's quite an important question. Why are you still around? <laughs> We're still around. Yeah, like, uh, why, like sort of I, I, I businesses so. don't generally yeah. last, you know, sort of 40 years yeah. like this. No. Um, I, I guess when I was preparing for this tonight, I thought, why have we done this? And it gets back to quality, quality, quality. If we keep producing quality cheese and being really fussy about what we do, the cheese continues to, to sell. So, um, look, Laurie, to his credit over the years, has always set the bar really high. And, and the closer we get to that all the time, uh, we seem to be able to sell cheese. So, it, and, and the brand's really well known, as we're just talking about. The airlines have wanted our cheese. The supermarkets have wanted our cheese. Um, it's well known in food service. And we always striving to keep that quality at a at a high level, and and it seems to up until the last couple of months, it seemed to work pretty well. No. Yes. So um, yeah, let's talk about the last couple of months because it's uh, certainly a very interesting time for all of our cheese makers. And uh, you know, I uh, you know we speak uh, regularly, and I, I speak to cheese makers almost every day. Uh, and it's, it's been very interesting to hear their take on how everything's going. But you're telling me today that uh, you're starting to bring your team back. Yeah, well, we actually think, and, and look, credit to you guys as well for getting onto the Australian um, cheese packs and, and really driving that, that, uh, that Australian market again. Um, we actually think we'll come out of the, uh, the other end of this, whenever that will be, a month or two months, with with a greater demand for Australian cheese. Mm. Uh, I think there's starting to be some value added back to the Australian manufacturing uh, sector again. And, and yeah, so we, so we actually think, we've, we've been putting people on to, to make cheese because we now have to make shadows of blue. It takes eight to 10 weeks to mature. Uh, Gippsland Blue is about a 15 week maturity. Uh, the, we think there's an opportunity out there to, uh, to come out the other side of this with with uh, a lot more market than we than we have at the moment. We're we're a little nervous about it, but uh, we also think we've got access to some really good people out there uh, that might have been chefing somewhere or in food service that uh, would like to come and make cheese rather than uh, be in the, uh, the the restaurant industry. So uh, so touch wood. We're, uh, we're, we're really optimistic about the, uh, the future of our, of our industry. Mate, that is, yeah, that's fantastic. absolutely fantastic yeah. to hear. That's so great. Um, it's, yeah, and I agree with you. I think sort of the markets are gonna open up uh, sort of over the next couple of months. Uh, yeah. And the demand for Australian produce, you know, we've certainly uh, yeah, not we've just, it's, yeah. oh, it's, it's yeah. amazing. We get through two tons of Australian cheese every week and there's certainly a huge amount of Tarago River in all of that. Um, it's been brilliant. Like we've really enjoyed seeing how Australians have backed Australians. Australian cheesemakers 
and Australian dairy farmers. It's mm. been unbelievable. And also not just having people wanting to eat the cheese, people are really interested to find out more about, you know, like yourself and um, about who these people are making this cheese. You know, it's not just about the cheese, it's the whole story around the cheese and where it comes from. And um, people really appreciate that. So um, it's it, that's why it's so great to have these chats like tonight with you and yeah. um, learn more. Yeah, look, look, I think we've got a really good story to tell and we don't often get out there and, and tell it too much because we're, Laurie's a cheesemaker and I'm a farmer. Um, <laughs> we're not that keen to do all this sort of publicity side <laughs> side of it but it's um when i look back at it we have a really good story to tell we employ a lot of people locally there's out of, out of about a million liters of milk that we put through the business a year we employ 25 people um that's uh that's adds a lot of value to our local community and we get our our boxes made in our little town in Irem south and we we buy all our goods through the hardware store and and uh a fair bit through the local iga and and um it's it's a good story to tell, and there's I've got three kids that work for me on the farm that all play footy for the local footy club and uh, and and do a bit of work for me, and and it it works, and it makes the makes the money go around the the local town, yeah, week after week after week, and uh, we're we're really proud of how we how we contribute to our to our local community out there. Um, but we probably don't get out there and promote ourselves as well as we probably should. No. Well, absolute <laughs> bloody ripper, David. I think you just sold yourself pretty well <laughs> just then. Um, yeah. It's so true, you know, so uh, with all the Australians around the country buying the therapy box with the Australian cheeses in it, and, you know, we've made it very clear that the money um, you know, buying those cheeses is money that's going into your communities. It's money that's yep. paying for the milk from the dairy farmers. It's it's money that's you know paying for the food on your on your staff's table. Mm. Um, yep. It's just so important, and that money once it's in those communities really cycles around. Mm. Um, yep. Yeah, it's just it's just so important to keep yep. you know, our Australian cheesemakers mm. functioning and running. Yeah, and, and look, it. it helps us because it really values our cheese to where it should be as well uh because you you it's a it's a lot of money people are paying for cheese and they and the other thing it allows us to do is get cheese to you guys that is matured uh correctly it's like the gippsland blue we saw before mm. um it's almost matured to the day that your customers are going to get the cheese and as a cheesemaker and a farmer, that's exactly what we want to do. We we do all the hard work, and then we uh, know that it's going to come up to you guys in two or three weeks' time and get out to your to your customers in perfect condition. And, that <laughs> makes and I think that. I think too, like let's talk a little bit more about that because I find that yep. really fascinating. And a lot of people, particularly here in Australia, don't understand what that actually yep. means. You know, um, you know, people don't know what an affinoir is and um, we don't have them here in Australia. So no. um, it'd be, yeah, can you explain a little bit more about... Yeah, we're, we're, we've actually got a little side business going called Tarrigo Affinoirs as well that uh, we do mature some cheese through to a small portion of the market that is absolutely ready to buy that cheese with about one week shelf life on it. That's uh, perfect to, to eat. And if, if we think we can get our market up to 10 or 20% of that, uh, it, it's what they do in France where, where they see Sam and Helen walking down the street and they know exactly what sort of cheese you like. Um, and they've bought one up from a little little cheese maker up in the hills and says, this is the cheese that you guys need to, uh, need to eat today. And I've had it in my cellar for four weeks and it's uh, perfect to eat. That, that's what we need to get to out here. And at, at the moment, we, we put a long shelf life on those cheeses and we send the cheese out to our distributors uh, a little too fresh. So we would like to hold it in our cellars, in our conditions, and then send that out there with uh, two or three week shelf life on it when it's perfect to eat. So that's our dream. And a portion of our market is now starting to understand that and, and demand it. And, and as a consumer, you get that cheese in, in perfect condition and you go, wow. Um, and and that's, that's, that's where we want to get to. So 
uh, you, you guys are helping us with that stuff. Well, David, uh, that, that kind of sounds like the perfect segue because what is it next week or the week after? You've got a, a stack yep. of cheese coming up to us. I have no idea <laughs> how much cheese you're sending because you just said, Sam, can I send you cheese? <laughs> And, yep. and you're just putting yep. it on a, on a pallet and sending it up. And we always say yep. yes if someone's going to yep. say, can I send you, you've, it? You've, you've got lots coming, Sam, and you've also got some of, uh, of Barry Charlton's from uh, Barry's Creek. So I um, was talking to him today, and he's excited about what you guys are doing for him as, as well. So, um, yeah, they're, they're, that Gippsland Blue is going to be in, in uh, prime condition. Uh, I know you've got it on your website now, and... Um, yeah, we're really excited to see how it uh, how it goes out there. Yeah, so it's going to be very interesting because I think, you know, one of the things that I actually try and educate um, our customers about is if they see a quality cheese in the supermarket that is past its best before or really close to and they've marked it down for a quick sale, that's yep. when you buy good <laughs> cheese. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, and look, we hope that it stays in its original condition for as long as possible. It's it's like the Gippsland Blue. It comes in a um, in about a seven kilo wheel, and the longer we can hold that in its original shape, uh, and then get it cut up and out to the customers, the uh, the better the experience is going to be for the for the consumer. So yeah. so we um, look, we send that out and. It, if it gets cut into wedges, it'll often still have four or five weeks shelf life on it. it, it it'll it hold its condition, but it won't improve its condition. Whereas if it's in a full wheel, it'll still continue to improve its condition over the over the life of the cheese. So yeah, when you're out there looking for your cheese, uh, the longer it's in that whole wheel, uh, the better chance you've got of getting that cheese in perfect, perfect condition out there. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. And um, yeah, David, let me share on our, how do I share on this? <laughs> and I'm gonna share on our website, this here, uh, because we just only yesterday put this up because you can actually yeah. buy um, big hunks of this Gippsland Blue. And so David's sending this up where it's just going to be ripe and ready for eating. And this is how the cheese maker wants his cheese to be shown. Yes. So when you see yep. stuff through the distributors, when you see it through the uh, the supermarkets, you know they need stuff with long shelf life um, because yes. they know it's going to sell. Mm -hmm. But with us, the, I guess we're a little bit different. We mm -hmm. almost pre-sell everything yeah. so that um, we can offer you something like this. Oh, you can get a half wheel or a quarter wheel. Oh yeah. man, yeah. far out. Yeah. That'd be great. And that's why also yeah. like we we like to cut a lot of our cheese as well because like you're saying, that way it stays in the whole wheel for a lot longer rather than it yeah. being portioned yeah. early and then sitting. And, and the other thing is, if you cut that cheese in that condition there and you seal up the edges of that cheese, it's gonna last really well. What happens is a lot of cheese goes out really fresh when it hasn't sort of matured and it gets a lot of air between the wrap and the, uh, the cheese because it's chalky and, and, and fresh and air is the enemy of, um, of, of cheese. So it'll, it'll disintegrate and uh, degrade rather than uh, keep, its, um, uh, keep its life. But if it's gooey cheese, it lasts two or three weeks, no worries at all. So as long as you keep sealing that up against that, uh, that face of the cheese uh, and keep the air out of it, it'll continue to um, last pretty well. Mm. Um, so now tell me, do you, uh, do you follow or sort of, uh, I guess, communicate with a lot of the other cheese makers in the, in the industry? Uh, a little bit more now that all this has happened. So. Yeah, tell me about uh, that. Like why, yeah. why do you communicate more? Uh, look, look, it's probably because um, most of our food service orders have, have uh, gone down substantially. So to ship it around the country, we need to consolidate um, uh, consolidated pallets and that sort of thing. So um, probably Monday afternoon, I'll be heading up to Mafra Cheese to see Ferial Zeekman, who uh, does an awesome range of cheese, and and we'll be consolidating a pallet. And um, you know, I was talking to Barry Charlton from Barry's Creek today. So um, yeah, there's there's probably a fair bit more happening out there now as as far as the cheese makers go about. Uh, yeah, maybe getting a little closer together and uh, uh, 
yeah, politicking a little bit more together than what we have in the in the in the past. So, yeah, and That's and I think it'll continue because look, we all see the opportunity now that there's there's a bit of love for Australian manufacturing again, um, and for Australian farmers, which is uh, uh, there's a lot of hard work goes out there for a, a lot of farmers to produce our milk, but we can we can do it. And as I say, the, the money goes around the local district. Uh, if you're buying an imported cheese, it doesn't run, that, that, that profit goes back overseas rather than runs around the community out here for, for three or four times. Mm. Yeah. And um, David, something else too, I think it's really important um, to kind of talk about is about the art of cheese making. You know, it's yep. very hands-on. It, there's a lot yep. of labour that goes into it and not just about yep. the first, first part of the making of the cheese, but as the cheese, you know, matures. And um, because, you know, we get people ask, oh, but, you know, that's, that's, a bit of, that's a bit of money for, you know, a piece of cheese. But it's like, yep. it's not something that's just pumped out of a machine, is it? Like, it's very yep. labour-intensive to make the cheese that you're making. It, it, it's like we say with the, the cow's milk that comes in, it's consistently good milk uh, because it's low stress, but it does change throughout the year. So when they're on, uh, say they're getting fed silage or they're in summer, it's a bit drier and they're on drier grass, it's still high quality milk, but it, it behaves differently in the vat. So the cheese makers have then got to adjust their technique as they, as they handle that cheese on the way through. And then uh, a lot of it, is looking at the vat and saying you stir it at the right time and you cut the cheese at the right time. And we have five or six people in there every time we make the cheese, just looking at the cheese and making sure everything gets done at the right time. And we never, we rarely do we get it exactly right, um, but we get it pretty close most of the time. So it's, it's I always say you, you make your cheese and then you're always trying to rescue it to make sure it's as best quality as possible. Uh, you've got to turn it at the, at the right time. Uh, you've got to put the holes in it at the right time. You've got to pack it at the right time. Uh, there's, there's there's a lot of care that goes into that cheese over its over its life. So there's a there's a hundred things that go on behind the scenes to try and make sure that cheese reaches you guys in the best possible condition. And it's hard. And that's um uh, I guess that's called specialty cheese making because <laughs> it is hard. And uh, sometimes it doesn't always work out quite like you hope it would, but uh, most uh, most of the time we get pretty close, I think. Yeah, well, I can see. I'm sure there's a few people in the audience nodding their head, at, you know, <laughs> understanding because I can see that we've got Barry Charlton on, we've got Nicole Gilliver from Grandview, mm -hmm. and there's a few other cheese makers listening in. Probably just yep. Going, yep, it's bloody hard, <laughs> yep. and you never know. It's you sort of almost like punting a lot of the time because you're hoping to God that it's going to turn out. Yeah, you, you can do a lot of things to make and to, to rescue it on the way through and there's lots of little, little techniques out there, but um, you've got to be watching it all the time. Uh, you, need to be, you need to be looking at that cheese. We do a lot of gradings, we do a lot of tastings uh, and, and you've, you've got to be manipulating that cheese all the way through its life to, uh, to try and get it there. And of course, the other issue is we make that cheese well ahead of when any orders come in. So we're punting the market out there all the time that we're going to be able to sell that cheese when it when it comes ready. So yeah, it's, uh, it's yeah, it's hard, but it also uh, um, if, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. <laughs> mm, absolutely. Exactly. How often does it go wrong? Uh, too often. <laughs> 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 what pills businesses like us is wasted. So, and we always have a policy: if it's not good enough to sell, don't sell. And um, yeah, the local pig farmer gets a little bit of that. So yeah, uh, and we try and make sure that his pigs go hungry. But it's yeah, uh, <laughs> you, you, you're best not to um, uh, best not to sell it out there if it's not not up to a standard. So yeah, uh, and, and and we live and die by. Uh, the amount of wastage we have out there. So it's, uh, uh, look, the more you look at it, the more you care for it, the better chance you've got of it uh, being excellent cheese out there. Yeah. And uh, that's it's, exactly uh, why your cheese is at the calibre that it is, like with that quality control that you have and that, you know, that's always that reaching that standard. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah look, I, I guess the partnership we want with you guys out there too is 
when we identify a really good batch of cheese coming in, uh, and we can usually do that sort of four weeks to six weeks out, we'll be uh, we'll be contacting you guys and say, hey, here it is. And it's it's exactly like the Gippsland Blue we got coming through. It's as good a Gippsland Blue as I've seen coming through for a long time. So we'd uh, we're hoping your customers, yeah. Get the benefits of that. I think they'll be pretty excited. Uh, I think they're going to have to fight me for it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so tell me, what's like, you know, the last uh, few years, it's, it's tough for a lot of business, particularly in industries like this. Um, what is getting you up each day to get out there back on the farm? Yeah, I, look, I love dairy farming and uh, I've got a great crew of people who help me out on the, the, the dairy farm as well. And I, I love the animals and, and yeah, look, dairy farming's been tough the last few years, but it's the, the milk price is actually at, at the present time is pretty good. So the surplus milk that we sell is, is, is helping a little bit. But I, I do love seeing all the hard work that goes into rearing the calves, treating all the animals really well. Uh, uh, the, the animal health side of it with our, with our cows, feeding them right, going into, into cheese and coming out the other end. When, when you see Gippsland Blue like that, it does make it more worthwhile than uh, uh, when, when you see going into a, into a product like that. And, and people eat it and they go goo -go over it. <laughs> it, it, uh, it, does, uh, it. It does sort of help. Yeah, it's, it, it's awesome. Mm. Uh, I love that. Like, I think it was a, a week ago when you, you called me up and said, Sam, I've got a heap of Gippsland Blue coming to you. And, um, and, you, and I said, well, what's it like? And you said, it's Guga. And that's <laughs> yeah. your description of Gippsland Blue. But it's you Guga. see the photo, it is Guga. I know. <laughs> yeah. And that's what we try and produce is, is soft cheese that's gooey. So the gooier it is, the, the better it lasts and the, uh, the more flavour you can pack in it. And when we do, do our tastings, we'll get five or six different cheeses out and we'll put them out and I'll just stand back and watch our staff eat it. And the one that disappears is the one that we think is the, the, the best out there. So, and it's nearly always the nice gooey one that, um, that, that they eat. Hmm. Yeah, yeah I'm like, I can't wait to yeah. do it. <laughs> I just, um, you know, I'm just, I find it really um, great that, you know, there's a real trend that I'm sort of hearing talking to you and the other cheese makers that we've spoken to that you're also passionate about the cheese and what you do. And, you know, even for you guys at Tarago, who've been doing it for such a long time, you're still clearly very passionate towards what you do. And, um, and I think that that is a real sort of what makes your cheese stand out so much from things that are yep. kind of more processed because you do care and you're passionate yep. and yeah. um, you know, it's, it's so great to hear. Yeah. And look, I've got to hand it to Laurie who's been 40, 45 years in the industry, who still gets out of bed every day and drives the quality side of it. And he, and he's passionate about it. And it's, he's, it's a life's work as, as dairy farming is my life's work. Um, and you can get to see something that's really extraordinary at the end of the day. So, you, not too many people get to to experience be able to turn something from from milk into uh, something that's uh, quite extraordinary out there, and it it it's hard and it's uh, laborious and it uh, has its moments. But uh, when you when you get a really good bit of cheese, it it becomes a, all worthwhile out there. And and look, we think we're on the cusp of something really great for the Australian industry out here uh, because there's some really great cheese makers around the country. Um, and if the if the country gets behind us, um, watch us watch us fly in the next couple of years. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I think this is, you know, it's interesting with a lot of the cheese makers. <clears throat> excuse me. There's two types. There's the ones who you know complaining about how hard it is, and there's the other ones like yourself who are seeing an opportunity. Um, yeah. You know, we've obviously seen an opportunity and we've gone for it yeah. and um, yeah. it's going yeah. down classes. Um, yeah. yeah, but it's, you know, it's so great to hear cheese makers and, um, you know, and business owners like yourself, you know, accepting that this is a really interesting time and tough time, mm -hmm. uh, but then also seeing the opportunities that are out there. Yeah. 
Mm. Yeah, yeah. Look, we've got to adapt, and this is a perfect opportunity to do it. Uh, uh, Laurie went through the the last recession back in the early '90s, and um, that's when we really built the business, when we had to get off our butts and actually get out there and do whatever it took to to do it. So here we are again, yeah, 30 years later, and, and you guys are doing it, and um, and we're having to do it as well. So. It's uh, it's so it's nerve wracking, but um, we do think that we can uh, really come out the other end of this with a with a much stronger industry. Yeah, and a much yeah. better business. Yeah. Now I just saw uh, Nicole Bamford on Facebook has asked, "How do you um, buy the blue cheese?" Nicole, I'm going to show you exactly. So head on to our website, cheesetherapy.com.au. Go into our cheese makers section. Now, this is where all of our Australian cheesemakers, so you'll see quite a few more uh, of our Australian cheesemakers going up on here. Um, and then, there we go. Okay. So, so, at this stage, what have we got? Oh, we've got a Tarago River cheese pack. So, that's a pack of four. But also, here it is. This is the Gippsland Blue. So, um, Nicole, I hope that answers your question because I'm pretty sure it does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I can't, I can't wait. So what sort of cheeses? I saw that four pack that uh, one of our uh, team members, Cassie, has just put up. What are we going to yep. see in that one? So, so we make about six cheeses. So what we're hoping to do is select four of them every month to go into that pack, the, the best of them. And we have for this month, which is uh, Gippsland Blue, Shadows of the Blue, Triple Cream and our, and our Brie. So we did a grading on all of them the other day. And then uh, at the end of the month, we'll be cutting them all up and sending them out. So, wow. yeah, that's why, uh, we always think we can probably meet the market with four out of the six of our cheeses being excellent. So, we're yeah, really looking forward to developing that uh, partnership out there. And I think, too, like, it's really exciting being able to do these packs that are specific to che the cheesemakers like yourself. Like, because um, yep. I don't know if everybody realises, but the cheese is actually being sent from you to the buyer. So there's no, the cheese isn't traveling all around the country to one place to there to there. It's, you know, yeah. people are really conscious these days about food miles. So I think, yeah. that, you know, it's going straight from you to them. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And that's what we're looking forward to get up, getting up and going. So it's something a bit different than what we've done, but uh, it also gets back to our ethos of sending that cheese out as best, close to its best before and in its best eating quality. And it's in our factory one day and in the sellers one day and then out to the uh, consumer the next day. So uh, really looking forward to uh, getting them up and up and going. Yeah, I, I see on Facebook, uh, Val Kamikov's on there. He loves, he said, Hi, I, I, I love Guga, uh, mm. Val, ex-Olympic swimmer. Uh, mm. And he just loves his, his gooey cheese. Basically, he just calls me up about once a week because he's eating so much of the cheese. He's going, <laughs> give me something more gooey. I don't yeah. know, the, the sort of his accent. <laughs> Sorry, Val. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, we've got a lot of excited people that have been viewing tonight. We've had a few messages from people all around the place. Um, it's been great. Yeah, um, I think someone said they're your cousin, David. Uh, in Zoom here. Who is that in Malulaba? Monique in Malulaba. Oh, that would be my Monique, yes. Yeah, Hello, Monique. Hi. Yes. Uh, we were up there a few months ago, so yeah, they're great supporters and uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, had a lot of fun times with my cousin Darren and Monique, so yeah. <laughs> Hello to them. Yeah. There you go. All of about five kilometres from where we are right yeah, now. Yeah. 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 Well. yeah. That's brilliant. <laughs> well, David, it's been it's been brilliant talking to you tonight. Um, it's so great to be able to share your art with Australia. Um, you know, the work that yourself and Laurie Jensen are doing is, you know, you've been doing it for 40 odd years and it's, it's just a work of art. It is amazing. It's bloody brilliant. Mm. Yeah. I yeah. appreciate what you guys are doing for the industry as well. It's, uh, yeah, times are changing and it's, uh, it's going to come out a uh, much different industry. So thanks to you guys for helping us transition. Yeah, now, uh, is your son Sam? He is. Yeah, he says that you need to bring back the goat cheese. Oh. 
<laughs> one day. And we also need to reopen the shop, I've been told a million times. So watch this space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> excellent, um, excellent. It's been so great to chat to you, yeah. David. It's, yeah. um, it's, you know, we always love speaking to you and hearing all about, you know, the cheese and, um, yeah, it's, it's been really yeah. great. And we've got a lot of people saying how they've found tonight's chat informative and interesting. So yeah. a lot of love out yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. No, I appreciate it. So, all right. Yeah. Thank well, you. David, have a, yeah. have a great rest of the weekend. Everybody, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Uh, as, as you know, uh, the Gippsland Blue that we saw, the Guga cheese mm. is now available on our website. Um, pre-orders. Pre-orders, mm. yes. Get into it. It's going to be great. So, ladies and gents, thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Helen. Everybody. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, David. Thanks, David. Yeah, thanks, Sam and Alan. Awesome. Thanks, thank guys. You. Thank you. Bye. Bye.